Hey guys, Live Free here. Let's talk about the Savage conversion that I'm working on. I'm further into it. Um, I just want to talk about the Speed Passion Savage brushless conversion kit. Um, some of the things that I've run into for problems with it. Uh, Speed Passion probably set it up for a small size motor. Um, with doing that, something that's actually the Tacar motor that I got here. It doesn't have fins on it like your castles or your Tekken motors. Uh, those probably wouldn't fit at all. I'll say that right now. Um, this being a flat can, uh, a little bit wider than a 540 size, it does fit in, but it needs modification. Okay. When you mount your motor into the motor mount, the motor mount is for a smaller motor. Why they'd want to put a small motor in a big 1 8 scale monster truck is beyond me so what I had to do was I had to drill one new hole one of the bolts would fit into the mount and then I had to drill another hole or slot to fit the second one to mount it after doing that now I had to figure out how to gear it I just spent $28 more on a new spur gear the reason is, you don't have much space in here. This is an 11 pinion and a 47 spur, and it barely fits. When I put the motor in, I tightened down all the, the, the mounts. I had no adjustments, none. And this barely fits. An 11 is a small pinion, that's tiny. Um, it does mesh okay. I do have some wobble, which is what you want, and it feels smooth, but I'm not going to get very much speed out of this thing at all with an 11 tooth pinion. So I had to order a new one of these that's actually for a Savage Flux and it's a 43. It's another 30 bucks. So it's more money I've had to spend to do that. I went ahead and got my steering. Well, let's talk about these before I go to the steering. The battery trays, they have pre drilled holes. The pre drilled holes are very high on the tray and they want you to use your bottom transmission mounts bolts for it by doing that you're lowering this pack a lot actually lower than your skid plate so the pack would be your battery mount would be down here you know say this is the battery tray it would be way way low and I mean like at least two inches lower than what you're looking at now see how this is right and flush almost with the, the bottom of the chassis that's what you want. You don't want anything coming and smacking into it off your skid plates. Okay. So the way they had it designed, it was the battery tray was lower than the skid plates. Anything that's going to come out from underneath your truck is going to smash into your battery tray. That's the design flaw. They should have never had it mounted like that. Okay. So also they didn't come with any instructions. I just lined up the bolts where they would line up on the chassis without drilling, and that's the way they have it. So I had to go ahead and buy hardware to mount these higher on both sides. I'll show you the other side. Right below the, the diff, there's your transmission plug here. So, that's the other side. Also, these things don't feel real strong. So, when you do do it, if you do do this, use big washers, or else your bolts will pull right through. Okay, if you use the ones they give, the ones they give you won't work, so you have to buy new ones anyway, so. Make sure you get washers that are decent size so you get a good bite on this tray. Otherwise, you'll be turning your thing in and you'll just pull the plastic through. Useless. Okay, let's go on to the next step of the process. The motor mount, I don't know if you can see in there. You see those two silver, well one, you see the top one. I'm talking about this bolt right here. That's something I had to buy, which was a dollar. This is a stainless steel motor mount screw for the, the chassis, for the plate, for the conversion kit. Why do I have to buy this? Because they send V-style bolts, V-style, to like sink into something. Like, uh, if you look at these bolts, see how they're countersunk right in? That's a V-style bolt. It's not a flathead bolt, it's a V-shaped, it goes V. So that way it'll be recessed and it won't scrape on anything as you're driving. 
This is a flat chassis. When you put a V bolt on a flat chassis, it's gonna stick up. It's not gonna get good contact to your chassis. You don't want that. You gotta have a flat bolt. So I had to buy those. The kit came with, again, the wrong stuff. So after I did all that, I got my motor mounted. I also got my steering servo in, which it didn't come with any of the linkages or anything when I got the truck. So that's all mounted in there, ready to go. And it's a Z9100S steering servo. Yes, it's a speed one. I don't have a torque, but this thing still cranks out 100 inch pounds. Uh, excuse me, 190 inch pounds of torque. And if you know about servos, this is one of the fastest that you can get. But it's a uh, 0 0.06 transit. I mean, that's at six volts. That's insanely fast. I didn't really get it for this truck, but it's got 190 inch pounds. If it seems like it can turn these big tires and have no issue, I'll keep it in there. If not, I'll have to buy a more tor torquey servo, which, you know, which will be fine. I'll have to buy another one, but I'm gonna try that one for now and run my servo saver real loose. So it's not too brutal on it. So I have the body on order. I have the speed controller on order. And I also have the new, 43T tooth on order. Um, my receiver I already have, uh, 3300T Spectrum. I'll be running my Spectrum system on this. And then paint my body and uh, we can go ahead and give this thing a pull. And that's just an update video of where I'm at and an update on this, which is really like, if you don't have drills and know-how and stuff like that, uh, this is probably not gonna work for you, okay? It, it's not just drop in, good to go. I think it would be drop in, good to go if you used, a, say, a, like a Valenian size motor and the VXL Valenian motor, 540 size motor, but nobody's gonna use that size motor in a big eighth scale truck. I wouldn't, you know? I, I suppose you could, but then you gotta buy a pinion converter to go from a three millimeter to a five millimeter to run this, you know, cause this is a 32 pitch. So it's kind of not even really designed for that. You can do it, but it's not what it's designed for. So I was lucky enough to talk to HPI and they told me that I could run a Savage Flux pinion, uh, spur rather, on this truck. So that saved my ass. Otherwise I'd be stuck with an, this gear ratio and that's it. And I have like a ton of, of five millimeter pinion gears and they're all useless, so. All right guys, that's just an update on the Savage and I'll be doing another update. Thank you, bye.